Oh, good evening, councillors. We are recording. We are recording the meeting, which we are now starting. However, in view of the extraordinarily tragic and sad events in Manchester, I want to start this evening with a minute silence. So we all stand. Very um, I would like the council to send a message of solidarity to the people of the Council of Manchester at the end of the meeting. Um, we do now begin. Um, what the first item is election of mayor. May I just say I'm taking the chair because Councillor Chesser, who is our mayor, is in London. The last I heard when I spoke to her was she was hoping that she might get back at some point. So whether she'll appear. I don't know, but I will be taking at least the first item, which is election of mayor. Um, now I'm looking at the clerk, because so far as I am aware, only two people evinced an interest in doing yes. it. One was myself and one was Councillor Sparks. Uh, Councillor Sparks having indicated his intention to do so, I made it clear at an earlier stage that I would not oppose him. And so Councillor Sparks is effectively unopposed as mayor. And on that basis, what I would ask you to do is to indicate by sort of acclamation, if you like, your acceptance yeah. of that. I don't think we need a formal yeah. proposition. So, all those in favour? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. What we normally do at this stage is pin the mayoral chain, which I didn't think we'd have available, but in fact, Councillor Chesser has provided. Um, to the new mayor. However, if I do that to your shirt, I'm likely to draw blood. So oh, maybe you're to stay in. That was the whole point, no. <laughs> you should have worn your jumper. Well, yes, you yeah, should have worn it. It's one time I didn't. <laughs> so I'll leave that to, uh, to Councillor Sparks to decide upon. Um, so I'm going to now move in that general direction to enable Councillor Sparks to chair the rest of the meeting. In fairness, actually, becoming a mayor. I think the idea of a chain is entirely appropriate. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to behave myself, sorry. You're like, like on the mood. You've got some signing to do. Yeah, he has to do that. For oh, right. What's he signing? He's 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 signing there. Like yeah, and he's 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 really there. We haven't got there yet. of Deputy Mayor. Yes, I've had um, two um, candidates, uh, first being um, Councillor Chapel and the second being Councillor Best. <coughs> right, do we need to ask for a proposer and yes. seconder? So could I have a proposer for first of all Councillor Chapel please and a seconder for Councillor Chapel? Oh sorry, thanks. I just have a proposer for Councillor Chapel at the moment. Do I have a proposer 
for Councillor Best. <coughs> Thank you. And the second of a Councillor Best. Um, I think that's probably an indication yes. of how yeah. the voting will, mm -hmm. will go. I think at that stage, regret to David, um, I think we must announce that Councillor Best is our new Deputy Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, he's unfortunately away at the moment, but uh, he'll be taking up his office on his return from his holidays. Yeah, I'm <coughs> um, I see you perhaps ought to do a vote, actually, mm. because we have a closing session. Right. Yeah. So, those in okay. favour of Councillor Best? Chapel. Thank you. Two, three. Um, I confirm I could have abstained from voting. Uh, sorry, you should have said. Yes. You, yeah, that was actually incorrect. You should have said against. Should have said it's against. For yes. one. So instead of saying for Council Chapel, you should have said. Those against. Those in favour and then those against. Those against and those abstaining. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. So those against. Yeah, I just wanted to make that. Yes. That kind of those anybody against? No. And those abstaining? I'm not against no, either candidate. No, 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 I'm not against either candidate. I'm not against either candidate. No, that, that's the truth. That's oh, why I'm right. abstaining. We had um, those four, Councillor Best, and um, some of you didn't put your hand up. Hmm. But then um, the Mayor said, um, those for Council Chapel, but that was actually incorrect because mm -hmm. it should be saying against. Against well, okay, so, so it's whether if any of you've got nobody against, then any abstentions. Yeah, I, I abstain. I'm, I'm abstained. Right, so we so have two abstentions. Uh, you abstain? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Good point. Okay. Um, I'd just like before we move on to the rest of the meeting just to pay tribute to the outgoing mayor, yes. Councillor Val Chesser, um, who's done, I think it was 17 months of service as chair of this council um, and uh, did a very splendid job in difficult circumstances in um, effectively rebuilding the council. Um, so I'd just like to, in her absence, um, congratulate her on her on her achievement. Yes, I'd like that recorded as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on. Apologies for absence. Uh, to receive apologies for absence. I've had apologies from Councillor Best and Councillor Ch uh, Chesser. And do we accept the apologies of <laughs> Councillor Best and Councillor Chesser? Ever such She's, she's probably meeting the Queen, isn't she? <laughs> right, the next item on the agenda is declarations of interests. To receive and consider any declarations of interest from members and officers under Section 50 of the Local Government Act 2000, Standing Order 35. This requirement applies only in respect of matters which are be, to be considered by the Council at this meeting. So first of all, to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests. No. To declare any other interests. On the basis that we'll be discussing the neighbourhood plan in due course, I should recall the fact that I also sit on the platform neighbourhood plan group. Yeah. I don't think anybody will have a house in London. I was going to say, we said this like the day. We all got houses in mm. London. Anyone with a property in Amble will be adjacent right. to okay. one of the development. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So everybody will declare that as an interest. I think that's it. Yeah, so. everybody, <laughs> everybody but me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> to consider any requests for dispensation. No. To report any gifts or hospitality accepted over the value of £50. No. no. And to report any inappropriate gifts or hospitality offered? No. no. Thank you for that. 
Oh no, Roy, just one thing about the dispensation. I'm going to look into whether the dispensation for the Queen Victoria Hall Trust needs to be um, renewed. Right. So it, it may be that next month we will have dispensations for that. Right, okay. So that's noted for next month. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, moving on then to minutes of the previous meeting, uh, which are in your pack. Is everybody happy with the minutes? And are you yeah. prepared, prepared to accept the proposition to approve and sign the minutes of the full council meetings held meeting held on 18th of April 2017 as an accurate record? Standing order 10C. Those in favour? Anybody against? No. Anybody abstaining? No. <coughs> We now move on to 1706, public participation from interested parties or members of the public for a maximum of 15 minutes. Have we had any notification? Has anybody anything they wish to, to raise? No. Um, that being the case, uh, the next item is consideration of requests from interested parties. There will be none of those either. Um, moving on to 1708, the reports. Um, first one, 170801, is police report. We haven't got a police officer with us this evening. No, they've sent their apologies. They've sent their apologies, so no report from them this evening. Um, the other report, 170802, district councillor's report. Councillor Rykole, are you, have you come with a report for us? Thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> on 17th May, the Dean of Police Council we held our annual meeting and, and I passed over um, the chairman's chain to my successor, uh, Councillor Colin Wright, who succeeded me. Councillor uh, Councillor Wright is one of the um, district uh, members for Rushden, and so following the convention of the Heads Council, he served as vice chairman in the last year. So I now return to committees. Um, I returned to the East Northamptonshire uh, Joint Standards in Place Committee um, and, and I'm also joining uh, the Governance and Audit Committee. In terms of perhaps, um, external assignments, uh, I will be the ENC Observer uh, and Committee Law Services, which is a voluntary organisation to which ENC give a grant uh, which, which provides legal advice uh, to members of the community. I continue to be ENC's observer as a sparsity group which represents all rural councils, uh, small rural councils throughout England, to try and make sure they get their, pay of the, their share of the grant. Well that's increasingly merging into work being done uh, towards the replacement of the revenue support grant uh, with full retention of business rates, on which, frankly, um, the experts have been treading water simply because there is an election in progress and uh, ministers don't want to take into account <coughs> until they're clear, uh, until they're, they're, they're very clear uh, uh, on, on, on a number of questions which, which still need to be resolved. And I also continue, of course, as PNC's observer, uh, a volunteer action hour. That's all I have to report to myself. Uh, as a formality, the yeah, formality, I, I, re I record the apology to my fellow district members around all, Councillor Stern, uh, who is on holiday abroad, uh, and Cap Councillor Vowles, uh, who is undergoing some medical treatment. We'll be back, we'll be back in the fray 
reasonably soon, I think. Um, Pastor Stern will continue on the Policy and Resources Committee and as Chairman of the Planning Management, and Councillor Barrels will continue as Chairman of Scrutiny. So all in all, I think our rule will be very satisfactorily represented. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Councillor Reichel. Um, the next item, 1709, is signing and sealing. Um, I will ask Councillor Sue Oakes to mm -hmm. read the resolution, please. Um, that only two councillors and the proper officer may seal any document required by law to be issued under seal on behalf of the council. Standing Order 14 B. Thank you. Do we have a second with that? Why not? No, second be one, if that way. <laughs> Councillor Fuller, then. <laughs> Those in favour? <laughs> Unanimous. We move on now to 1710 Town Matters to receive the report from the annual town meeting and to agree to publish it on the website. Um, you've got the report in your pack. Uh, is everybody, everybody seen it and everybody happy with the... Um, the report of the town meeting. <coughs> Can I then ask for some of the proposed? Oh, um, and the seconder? I'll second. Councillor Humphreys. And all those in favour of receiving the report and publishing on the website? I think okay. it's unanimous. Um, to consider writing a letter on behalf of the residents of the Stronglands Flats regarding compensation from National Grid. You've got a report in your pack. Did the clerk want to comment on this? Yeah, I had a lady come to visit me um, from the flats. And when we had, um, when the power, when the gas yeah. went off, um, everybody, or most people are going to be receiving from compensation. Um, but because they only have one metre going into their flats, all of the elderly people that are living in that flat, that they've got six pounds between all of them. It's ridiculous. And it's they, she's tried to write to National Grid, but they've basically said, this is our rule, you've only got one metre, you only get one amount of money. Um, so she came to the council just to see if we would oh, well, at least try and write to them. No, come on, we, them we've got a pile in here. How many, how many people is it? Um, I th oh, she didn't say exactly. I think that, well, there's about a dozen, I think. Mm. I think she said it works out. They're going to get about £2.50. Yeah, no, 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 it's, 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 it's the most ridiculous. They should have Oh, I mean, that's ridiculous. Apparently, spy homes aren't helping them. It's spy homes who have said that well, when they get the money, they'll share it out amongst them, which, which amounts to £2.50. But, but she, yeah, she said that they were equally as inconvenient. They had no heat. They were having to boil kettles yeah, for hot absolutely. water. So, it's ridiculous. So should we uh, perhaps write a letter to Spy Homes as well? A former councillor lives there. Mm. Can we? Debbie Murphy lives there. Is somebody prepared to propose? Can we have a, a proposer oh, to councillor yeah. S.O. seconder that we, the clerk drafts a letter. Councillor Glenn seconded it. Yeah. Those in favour? Definitely. And a letter will be sent. Absolutely ridiculous. That's to both. From to both. To Spire Homes yeah. and. Um, and the National Yes. I think, can, I just, <coughs> can I just say, I think with Spire Homes, you have to, it's quite brutal because I'll take no notice of the one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only thing you've got to say, really, though, is that the people who actually came and fixed it were, you know, they did a tremendous job. Yeah, they were. Um, you know, you can't. You couldn't knock what they did, mm. but the actual compensation package just is, is a nonsense in this circumstance, in my opinion. Okay. <coughs> yep. Let's, Let's, yes. We move on to 1711 Council Matters to receive the clerk's monthly report. Oh, yes. Did you want to comment? Um, or well, just... I, haven't read, well it was, I haven't really got that much on it, um, but I think there were. There was there is something on it that's um, regarding the um, 
the house on Lyme Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if anything wants to be said about that now, whether you want to wait for planning. Um, well, just so that the background is understood by councillors. This was an application for a property in Cotterstock Road, more or less opposite of the Lyme right. Avenue junction. Yeah, um, it's not the first application on that site, if I remember correctly. Right. And when a previous and not utterly dissimilar application came before the council, the council did not object to it. As is normally the case with every application that comes before the council, the deputy uh, chair of planning, Councillor Networks, will wherever possible visit the site, take photographs, and will put together a presentation to the planning committee, in which the, we will see those photographs, we will see projected onto the screen the planning application and relevant information. As a matter of course, he will check the council's website to see if there is notice of any objection lodged at that point. And the difficulty there is, is that whilst an objection may have been made, if it isn't by that stage shown on the council website, we have no means of knowing that that has been an objection unless the objector has also copied their objection to this council. When that application came before the planning committee, there was nothing on the website to indicate that there were any local objections. The council were not made aware of there being any local objections, which is why local objections were not discussed, because they couldn't be discussed within the brain. We looked at the planning application and its merits, and bearing in mind the fact that we had previously approved a not dissimilar application, and on the basis that we did not see planning grounds to object to the application, we indicated an intention not to object. What has happened subsequently is that there were in fact some objections that were made to that. Objectors found out that the council had said that it wasn't objecting and became rather unhappy that the council hadn't objected. Indeed, in some cases, he seems to be thinking that we should have consulted them all, although quite how he could when he didn't know anything about it, I do not know. Uh, in any event, the clerk was contacted, and to cut a long story sideways, there's been a certain amount of uh, communication with District Councillor Vowles um, about the possibility of District Councillor Vowles asking that this application be considered um, by the committee rather than being a officer decided thing in view of the fact that there are some objections. There has been sort of requests about the council reviewing and changing its decision. I don't really see how we can. However, there are things in the correspondence and there were some emails from uh, two residents that I've seen that frankly will require a response from the planning committee but I think the right venue to decide that is not here tonight but when the next planning committee takes place at the beginning of June so I've already requested that this matter be placed on the agenda for the planning committee in June we'll look at what was said some of it is clearly somewhat uninformed if, I, if I'm impolite about it uh, betrays a certain lack of understanding of processes and so on. So we need to put people straight. But I've also said that it seems to me perfectly appropriate. Now we are aware that there are parishioners with concerns to, if you like, support the move to have Councillor Bowles raise it and see where it goes. So that would be my recommendation that we do back, back that. Um, and we inform people that we're doing it what happens next is in the hands of the planning committee. It never is and never will be our decision. We are only a consultee in any event. But, but that's what that's all about. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chapel. Um, Very well put. Are there any other comments? That's an awful lot more. <laughs> 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 Anything else from your no, I don't think I, think I won't do tonight. <laughs>
rest of the report is there in your pack mm -hmm. from the clerk. There, there are no real planning uh, objections to it, I think. Um, they just are. Right. Um, 17.11.02, to approve the June 2017 Oracle. You've got this again in your pack. Well done. Comms and marketing. Have we? Because I found out. Found a late one, have we? Well, I've been spelling uh, Captain hey. Humphrey's name. Well. I went through that with a fine tooth comb. It's Council Humphrey's name. It's Council Humphrey's name. Oh, oh well, in fairness, I, you can't, can't accuse me of that. So, uh, so I've corrected that. Well, I, have, I will be correcting that. Oh. Well, the number of barrels still leads to the left, I think. But, so. <laughs> Sorry? The problem the wall memorial still leads to the left side, so apart from that. <laughs> <laughs> You can't be straight now. It's an illusion with this post behind it. The post is leading. Yeah, well, the post definitely tips all over the place. Yes, that definitely is. The post is definitely not vertical. That's right. That makes it look worse than it is. If you like, if you like, and you've got the time, I'll take the post out completely. Because it took me ages to get rid of the keep left side. <laughs> I think it's I think, I think it's involved this much much better than the first draft. I think it's very good. Actually. Everybody's happy with the rest yeah, of the content. Well, yeah, 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 the front page. Right. It's all right. We've so, counted at 16 pages, which was our target, yes. and I'll tell you now, we're well underway, the group are well underway with the next one, which we're hoping to get the rest of the contributions in June, um, start compiling the thing in July, with a view that in August it goes out to um, the printers and delivery late August, early September. Is that, is that the shuttle yeah, we've yeah. We Would you like me to take the poll out? Because I can take the no, poll out. No, 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 no. <laughs> the picture is, the picture is in there now. And, uh, yep, the picture is there. Um, we straightened up the other picture. Yeah. We've done some cropping on the, the town uh, council picture. Um, we cropped out because we had more Fletton House than town councillors on the picture. So we cropped that picture a bit. In so doing, it got stretched a bit. Um, <laughs> and we ended a up bit. with we ended up with some councillors with we very broad shoulders. We had, we had a lot of munchkins there. <laughs> um, I think the thing to do is to take the council out, councillors out, and just have a picture. Oh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> That's a much better idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've got loads of pictures of flat mouths. We, we normally only have the councillors um, photographed once every four years on average, you'll see from the pictures out there. So um, for the next three years we certainly can have pictures of flat and house if that's what you want, Councillor Bill. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, the next item then, 17.11.03, are you okay? No problem. No problem. Just no. looks like just looks like the pitch has been touched up. Oh, touched up. What? It would have to be if I didn't. <laughs> what? I didn't touch a mum. I just cropped it. Mm, I didn't yeah, touch it. Well. It's weird. It's all, it's all no, weird. Excuse me. I look like a grinning, grinning idiot off the head. So, uh, well, there we go. Anyway, if we yeah, move on. Yeah, that was my only comment. Thank you. If we move on to review the code of conduct. Um, I'll ask the clerk. Yeah, well, I changes. I noticed that you hadn't had a code of conduct um, since 2012, so I happened to contact Sean just to see if there was an updated one, and she came back with yes, there was an updated one um, from January 2017. Now, um, I don't see a great difference between this and the other one, but um, as you follow the code of conduct. You've, you've adopted these more pants. Yeah, I'm going to say, can I, can I answer me? You know, updated from what? Because actually, we've got a big booklet actually. Well, the code of conduct that you, that's your staff handbook. But your code, it is, your code but, of but the point is, it does contain a the code, code of conduct. conduct yeah. um, but you were, you, the last code of conduct that you signed was 2012, and since then there have been two updates. Okay, so well, I think so you, yeah. you really should adopt the latest one as you well, why not? Why usually don't? adopt East or Pants. Um, I don't, well, I can't see what you're doing. Do you have a person present, present who serve on the Joint Standards Complaints Committee dealing with code of conduct issues? That's Councillor Reichold and myself. Um, we'll both tell you that 
we didn't, for some reason, we didn't adopt the one that followed the 2012 one. We stayed with the 2012. Quite a lot of parishes did. Some, some changed to the new adoption, some parishes didn't across the whole of East North Ants. Um, Sean would like to work to one code of conduct because if she gets issues in from councils, complaints about councillors or whatever, it gets a bit tricky if you're working off um, a number of different codes of conduct models. Um, so she would like us all to be on the latest one. So if we can adopt this latest one, and I think the changes are minuscule yeah. from earlier versions, um, then I think that simplifies the work of the joint standards um, board um, in dealing with any issues that come up concerning um, parish councillors, town councillors. Can I just say, I mean, isn't it our duty actually to adopt a code of conduct that's actually used by uh, groups like the JCC? I don't think we have any choice to do anything other than but, but, than but do that. Frankly. It's not compulsory. No, no I don't. Uh, yeah, but I, yeah. I, 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 yeah, it may not be yeah. seriously compulsory, yeah. but it does seem to be completely cockamamie mm. uh, if we don't. I checked with the then clerk, Deborah, I checked with her when I first went on to the JSCC committee and said, um, are we on the latest um, version of the Code of Conduct? And she confirmed that we weren't um, and that we, we, we hadn't chosen to adopt the latest code at that stage. But as another one has now come out in January of this year, um, it would, as I said earlier, it would simplify matters if we all worked to the same thing. If Sharm has just one code to work to, she's trying to get more parishes to adhere to that. Um, do I have anybody prepared to propose? Are you prepared? Are you willing to know about spellings or punctuation errors? Um, I didn't write it. But <laughs> we don't know. I mean, we, we, are, we would like to know. Them. Yes, we'll so feed those back to. If, if there's spellings and punctuation, you can send them to me. To you. Right. Yeah, please. And well, we'll, well, we'll, well done, We'll pass well, those really on. That's the second show of punctuation. We'll pass those on to the monitoring officer and. Uh, <laughs> I will propose. They'll be. You propose that we adopt in, the new code? In, in principle, I think we Do I have a seconder for adopting the new code? I think so. And all those in favour? Any against? Any uh, abstentions? One abstention. I haven't read it, so I can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that seems reasonable. <laughs> A reasonable, enough. A reasonable enough. approach. <laughs> um, the next item, 171104, um, is a much bigger oh, job God. to read through. Oh, no. um, review of the standing orders. i asked the clerk again. Are there well, any... I've put this on because um, Council Chapel raised an issue, well, a point about committees. Yes. And we are a little bit out of date on our committees. Yes. But I think also it'd be worth, it's, it's always worth looking at your standing orders at this time, this particular mm. meeting. Yes. Um, and I think probably there's a few other things that need changing as well. It also has to be said that the version that's on the website, the version that we've got here, is not the right version. Um, and don't ask me how that happened, but I know that we reviewed these last year. Yes. And that followed a, a, a previous review of the exact date of which I can't recall. But the fact of the matter is that, that for example, I've been able to plan working party no. for a very long time. The references to all of that were taken out, it was agreed ages ago, and all of a sudden, it's, they're there again. It was May of last year that we um, upgraded it, and it was at that stage, I think, a composite, the best bits of um, the NCALP standard, um, the one that we got from um, the monitoring officer, used by ENC, and our own. And we looked at the, the best of all three, I think, at that stage, didn't we? And we yes. compiled our own from that. And then somehow, um, it somehow uh, an older version got, out, got sent out this, by accident. This is on the website, and it's 19th of October 2016. But it's wrong. It's not what was agreed in the 19th of October 2016. It was reviewed in October because former mm. councillor Dainter then came up with one or two things and there were some amendments yeah. in yeah. October last yeah. year. Yeah. However, um, I looked at it on the website 
literally in the run up to this meeting. Is it different to this one? And what's on the website is not right because it this includes references, for example, to the Neighbourhood Plan Working Party, which we're taking out ages ago. Well, the exist. only thing I can suggest is that we go through this. Mm -hmm. and if we try to do that tonight, we'll be here forever. Mm -hmm. But I'm conscious yeah. of the fact that I've got another writing on this agenda, which of itself is going to take forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> if councillors are relatively happy with it, I'd be surprised if anybody demurs. I'm quite prepared to go through this again and come back with some proposals for revision stroke correction. And it is, in some places, correction because I know that simply this is not right. Um, strictly speaking, our provisions say that if we want to amend standing orders, we have to table notice of the amendment in one month and then consider it in the following month. Seems to me that may not necessarily be appropriate in connection with corrections of something that's a sort of manifest error, although the point isn't dealt with anywhere in standing orders. Um, it does raise a bit of an issue in relation to what's about to follow, because standing orders say certain things about committees, which actually are not in line with what's on the agenda here. Um, there's nothing much we can do about that, it seems to me. We're stuck with what the standing orders say about the committees at this point, and if we review the standing orders and change what we say about committees, we may just have to revisit the issue of the committees and due course. But yes. otherwise, we'll just be here for hours going through this clause by clause, and I can tell you it takes a mm. long time to do it like well, this. Would you, when would you keep me in the loop? Um, not only will I keep you in the loop, I want to end up working with you over yeah. it. Okay, <laughs> um, it it's, it's, it's quite an exercise, mm -hmm. but it's one I've done a number of times over the last 30 years. Can I have a proposal then that we ask Councillor Chapel to well, take this away, definitely. study it and uh, report to us at the next meeting? I've got two yeah. arms up for this one. Yep. And I mean, uh, do I have a seconder for that? <laughs> Well, I've got a double second. I've got, I've got two arms. All those in favour? I, I took Councillor Fuller as a point. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Jolly good. Fine. Yep. I'm a double seconder. Yep. And I must say, David, oh, it's, God, a, going it's a wonderful before. thing you do with that. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you don't want to break that. <laughs> 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 you know, you know. oh, I, look, can I just say at this point, you know, look, David does a sterling job on this. I mean, it's got to be the driest thing that you ever have to deal with. It's, 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 like, interesting. It's, oh, it's wading through treacle. It's how you should conduct your business. Mm. So well, it's all the right. most important documents <laughs> that you've got. That's why I'm no good at it. Next business. Item 1712. <laughs> Membership of committees and working parties and representations on other bodies. Um, to review the committees and working parties and select the members. And the first item up here is the planning committee. Um, we've got it at the moment that um, the standard format is seven councillors, including the mayor uh, or deputy mayor. Which is actually wrong. The standard orders say that every councillor is entitled yeah. to a member of the planning yeah, committee. Yeah, which has yes. always um, been a bit of a strange thing. It may be that they don't choose to be. And obviously when you're looking at things like the quorum, it is the quorum based on the actual people who are on the committee otherwise it would be a nonsense. But it shouldn't say seven councillors, including mayor or deputy mayor, it should simply be open. The standing orders do actually say that seven is a minimum, mm. which is actually possibly something we will need to look at, because if we struggle to get to seven, mm. and one looks around and thinks, well, actually, there's eight of us here tonight, two, of, two people are absent. But that would mean that if this was a planning committee, lose two more people out of it, and you know, face it, you've got a problem because yeah. you're not complying with your own standing order. Yes. So we may want to revisit the idea of saying that there is a minimum number. The maximum, logically, should be everybody. Mm. So I would simply say anybody who wants to be on plan should indicate that they... I yeah. think you would set your quorum. With well, the your quorum, on the face of it, would depend upon Standing Order 18 yeah, it's, it's a which, proportion, which is a proportion yeah. of yeah. the membership of the committee, yeah. mm. um, which is why it's three at the moment. But that's which wrong, is actually, because if you say seven, you'd have to say four as a quarter. Well, that's right, and that's why I pointed out that yeah. it seemed to me inconsistent mm. that when you've got yeah. 
Planning down here saying seven councillors including mayor or deputy mayor quorum three and then you say estate seven councillors including mayor or deputy mayor yeah. quorum four I simply know. doesn't make any sense at all. Can we, can we actually set a, just set a quorum and forget the ratio? You well, we can't for your full council meetings. We can't for the full council. We could do something different in our standing orders in relation to committees. Mm. And there is a moot point which happened earlier in the year which is, do you look at the number that it could be, mm. i.e. if yeah. you've got a committee that yeah. says it could yeah, be yeah, X, yeah. and do you base your quorum on that? Well, of course, that would be a nonsense in relation to planning, because if the possible membership is 14, mm. your quorum would be so high that you probably never ever get a valid quorum for a planning meeting. Mm. So it ought to relate to the actual members from time to time. So if for the sake of argument you've got five members on yeah. planning, yeah, yeah, yeah. and one ceases to be a councillor, you've actually got four members and your quorum should be based around that. There's a minimum, uh, for a committee though, you have a minimum of three as a quorum, reality, you can't go lower. In quorum. reality you have to set a minimum, minimum. Yeah. and three would seem logical because mm -hmm. anything else is fairly nonsensical. Although it's the same, it's like for this, although you're only ten councillors, your quorum is still five because you mm. should be fourteen. It should be fourteen. <laughs> well, it's not just a committee number, it's the number of people who turn up as well. well. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's been a factor, mm. as right. we, we found out. Mm. Um, right, can we move on by asking how many people will um, are interested in, in serving on the planning committee? Oh, crikey. Hello. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm on it already. Well, no, we started. I know, but you've got to be rejoined. Mm. <laughs> well, I've got my hand up. He wants to rejoin. Oh, come on. Well, I, I, I well, you're automatically on states as well, but, hmm. but you're, on you're automatically on it. I'm just yes. wondering if so it's mayor or deputy, does that mean you can both be on it or not be on it? Just you want to be how? Um, well, well, that's a very good question. Can mayor and deputy, isn't it? Can attend well, any. Well, you you know, word, it can attend any meeting, I believe. Well, I don't think it is. I don't think it's an endor. Is it an endor? On the, on the it says can stroke or in our terms of reference. Yes. So, it could be, so we could have both the mayor and the deputy mayor as a member of the planning committee. Yes. It should, should be at least one of them, but it can be both. Um, I mean, obviously anybody who's not here tonight can yes. ask to go on. They can ask to go on so as would well. You like, would you like me to put your name as well? Please. Yes, please. Um, it's better that we've got too many than too few, I think, in the event of holiday season and illness and what have you. I've got six. One, two, three, four. Just put our hands up again. Five, six. Do you want the hands up again just to check? Is there going to be a clash of states? No, 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 no. So that's everybody? No, it's not. No. It's, all it's not me. <laughs> um, all well one. Well. You say no, not you. No, right. all well one. Well. 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 I've got other ones. So we have now got seven, seven. so um, yeah, yeah. that's so the seven. minimum that we that we require. If the other two, either or both of the other two, want to come on as well, we've got some reserves. Um, yeah, that's that's so like yeah, the idea. <laughs> Coming off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are we leaving the quorum? It's going to be. Um, Are we leaving the quorum as three? If we can do that. Yeah. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to reduce it because Again, you look at 18. It's by reference to standing oh, order 18, oh, yes. which according to what is in our pack, it says, because I'm having a print end of it here, the quorum of the committee is one third of its members. Yes. Now, if the committee is seven, one third of a seven doesn't quite work. No. So, on the face of it, it would be three. Yes. yes. Yeah. You I don't have to think something really around it there. there. As long as you yeah, don't right. have to be. Exactly. I think, yeah, I think the rule is you round it down as long yes. as you don't go below three. From what yeah, I can imagine, you can sit down and everything. That's the reason why you don't do it. Right, so you round up, that's why we had to have five, which was the third of 14, yeah. rather than four yeah. as a third of 14. Can I just say, there's a bit of an issue because I picked this up and my wife has just done so. Councils must elect either planning or estate management. Now, that's a bit of a problem. That came about in 2015 when Councillor King was the mayor. He wanted estates and planning on the same night, and with 14 councillors, we were told we either had to elect to go to one or the other. 
we couldn't be on obviously both because they were on the same mm. night at the same time. So that's where that came from, but that, we could, we could obviously, now we've got them on different nights, we could... Well, A, you can do it. B, there is a standing order that says all councillors should be a member of at least one committee, but of course there are four committees, because there's finance and general purposes, there's estates, there's personnel and there's planning. So in fact, as long as you're on one of those four, you fulfil it. Actually, technically, it says... All councillors should be a member of at last one committee because it's a yep. slight time to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that will be one of the things that we'll get changed. <laughs> so that, yes, <laughs> yes we'll pick that up as well. <laughs> the spell good. checker wouldn't have found spell it. Spell checker wouldn't have found that one. No. Um, okay, we've got planning committee. Moving on then. If, how uh, so, many... Sorry, sorry Nay, may I just say, so where are we on that? I mean, we can be on are, are we, are we saying now that, that we can be on both? Both. Yeah. We can be on both. Yes. Okay. Okay. yes. All right. So I'm now going to ask for those of you who wish to be on the estate management committee. I suppose I'd better get on it as well, just to make it quorum. One, two, three. We've got five of us. Can we, can we vote for Charlie? Charles both both Charles, Charles, Charles and Val are already on. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Charles already on, isn't he? Um, perhaps yeah, the best yeah. said yeah. he yeah. would like to continue yeah. when he sent us a And I know Councillor Chester wants to as well, right. so okay. um, we've got the... You're definitely there. We've got the seven there, cool. then, with a quorum of four, so we need Close. always four of us. Okay, that's got the two main. Well, it doesn't say four or three. Well, it say four, say three. Four. I don't understand that. It's the it same. has to be the same as the other one. Well, should, I would have thought it should, but yeah. that's part of standing orders. But standing orders, we've got to change. Yes. Well, in fact, um, no, because standing orders simply says one the third. quorum of the committee is one third of its members. Okay. So, no, that was so one, it's one, one third. Of the I, that was so one of the questions. That was one of the questions. Was going to answer is anything? Is that basically it should be three? Yeah. Which is helpful. We've battled on with a quorum of four and uh, and struggled haven't we so three would be it'd be lovely if everybody yeah. turned yeah. up yeah but they often don't it'd mm -hmm. be lovely if we had a full number of councillors yes it would absolutely yeah. 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 okay moving on we then come to um, the finance and general purposes Committee. And I have to say that what's on the agenda is also wrong because it isn't plus two at the council. It's according to the standard, if you're according to the terms of reference. Yes. It is in fact Actually, up to five other councillors. Yeah. And it is up to. Yeah. Yes. So, well. so it's mayor, deputy mayor, chair of the states, and you won't know who that is until the first yeah. states, states, states meeting to elect the chair, and up to five others. Yeah. Cool. Um, so can we in fact do that tonight until we've had an estates meeting? Or well, it would well, be whoever you're you know, your next estates meeting. Whoever becomes head of that just automatically becomes yeah. a... Right. If he or she is or one of the empty ones, well, they're just sitting there wearing two hats for the yes. vote right. Right. Okay. So, um, in, in that case, we've got the, the mayor, deputy mayor, and head of whoever is head of estates, that will be three. And you said it's up to five. Others. Up to five. So they, um, with those three, there would be two other. No, it's up to five in addition to those. Oh, up to five in addition to those. That's eight. You've got so eight. Who is, who is happy to stand on the finance subcommittee? I'm sick and tired of this one. Council that's probably Glenn five. and oh, sorry, it's, it's three. One, two, three. We oh, don't know. Sit. Oh, sorry, I've got one, two, five. Yeah, five. Five. Yeah. five. I thought Peter, yeah. Malcolm and myself. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Got the one, other three. three. Got six. Yeah, yeah. That's all right, though. Yeah. Um, right. Councillor Chesser and Councillor Best are serving on there at the moment whether one of them might um, wish to continue. One of them might end up as head of estate. You never know. Well, Council so. Best is automatically on it anyway, because he's deputy. Mm. Ah, yes, of course he is. Yes, he's um, deputy. Yeah. So it's whether... I don't know, do you know this? Councillor Chesser. Um, I don't know. She hasn't, right, okay. hasn't told me whether she wants yeah. to be on the finance. Uh, so I've got, I've got one, two, three, I've got six. Do you want the... 
Four of us three? Because you can't have a quarter of two. Yeah, it would be three again. It would be three. three. It would have to be three, mm -hmm. yes. Three is a good number. Mm. But then obviously if anybody else can join. Yes, yeah. yes. Up to our mm -hmm. limit. Um, so so moving standing, on then. The standing orders don't reflect that. The standing orders say the quorum shall be one half of the committee membership. No, it says it should be one third. It says one half. Oh, that's interesting. Well, the one that is in front of us, it says one third. So, so, so. Yeah. On the one that's been printed. That's why they need reviewing. So what, 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 what's that on? From the floor? So what age? One half. Doesn't give a date. Oh, right, okay. One half. Well, that would be it's three and six. It's never been a half. No. Really? No, I, I, I don't ever recall it being a half. Right, let's no, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's move on, please. Yeah, um, to thought. personnel. Um, mayor, Deputy Mayor, Head of Estates again. Um, it says here plus four. That's actually right. That's actually right. <laughs> <annoying. laughs> so, who, who wishes to be on the personnel? I will stay on the personnel. Councillors Chapel and Humphreys. Oh, I've got my hand up. Councillor Oaks N. Again, we, Councillor Chesser will probably want to remain on that. I would have thought so. Yes. So, so that would be the full quota. Yes. We'll have to ask her on her return. Um, oh, well, shall I not put her on then, if she's not? I can't put it down there. I won't put you down, not, her. No, no, we'll have to ask her. Not unless she's yeah. successful. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to ask her. If not, we can fill yeah. another vacancy. Yeah. Later, can't we? So we have six. So we're going to make a quorum of three for that as well. Yeah, the quorum would have to be three at the moment, yes. Four. Okay. And we now move on to it says here communications. It's actually communications and marketing. Um, the two have been combined. Um, no more than six councillors, quorum of three. Um, those wishing to stand on communications. Oh, I'm not trying here. Yeah. I'm going to have a very busy year. Two, three, four, five. Eight. If I'm not saying that. I was wondering if there was that if there wasn't enough people. Oh, uh, did you just put your hand? I'm putting my hand. No, no, no. no, no. You're on it. It's too late. No, David, too late. We saw your hand go up. It's just how busy. Yeah. So, mm. I was going to do it if, I, if nobody else did it. Would you like to do it? I would love to do it for a little time. Okay. I'm, not sure if, I'm sorry, where are we with this? I'm confused. I'm sorry. Bye. Okay. I'll come into it. So there is a space. You've got councillors Peel, Glenn, Oaks, S, Oaks, N, and Sparks. Right. So we still have one. One vote. That's one vote. So you've got one vote. No, no, no. I would have done it if there was nobody voting, I would have put myself up for it. Oh, we we'll have before. to ask the other two whether they... Because I'll have before, David, you know. This is what I wrote. Right. OK, if we can uh, get back to the business, please note every committee and working party shall at its first meeting before proceeding to any other business elect a chairman and vice chairman who shall hold office until the next annual meeting. Standing on <coughs> 23A and 23B. Right, the next item on the agenda is to review the terms of reference for the planning committee. Ooh, not here, not there. Well, this is where you may need to be turned. They're here, and as the current chair of that committee, I would say I can't see any of this problem with it, but I defer to Councillor Peel. Well, I, I, I was just <laughs> saying, sorry, I, I just thought we'd have to do, you'd have to review the standing on that. As you are doing before we can actually review all the, the committees on the standing order, right? Not the terms of reference. No, I do the terms of reference independently because the terms mm. of reference are a sort of appendix to the standing orders and can therefore be whatever they are. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So right. I would say I would suggest they just stay as they are. Are we happy with that? Yeah. Yes, I'm happy with that. A proposer and a seconder for that. Oh, I'm up. Oh. A proposer and a seconder. I don't want to review them again. All in favour. 
Who are we doing first? You're the proposer. Councillor Roach was the proposer. Councillor Fuller was the seconder. Mm -hmm. Those in favour? Go on, David. Smashing the job done. Moving on to review the terms of reference for the Estate Management Committee. Proposer. Okay. So proposer, by the seconder. Yeah. Those in favour? Jolly good. The only thing I would say is just when we redo it, because it specifically says that the forum on this one is four councillors, and we just said it in fact is three, can we yeah. alter it? We need yeah. to alter that in the terms of reference, yes. Right. Can, I just read, read, can I just read the rule basically? It says to review it. Now, does that mean it's reviewed by the Estates Management Committee, you report back to full council, or does it mean that we review it? Um, I'm slightly it's full council, but that produces the terms of reference for right. the but, 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 but what are we saying then? Is that we are full council is reviewing that. Okay, they have to go through, yes. march through all these. Yes. We're doing it now. Oh, we're doing it rather yeah. quickly. Yes. Mm, yes. So, Johnny Goods. Okay, fine. Okay, Joy we're moving it. Yeah. Um, the next one then, 171304, to review the terms of reference of the Finance and General Purposes Committee. Now, we may have some rough edges here because Finance and General Purposes and Personnel, which is the next one after this, came about by um, doing away with Operations Management Committee. Yep. Um, which we stopped last year and we went for these two separate committees instead. So it may be there's some rough edges there. Councillor Chapel will be the expert on whether we've got the lingo um, whether we've got these right now. Looking at what finance actually does and looking at these, I can't see any obvious omissions, nor can I see it trespassing into other areas. So I must admit I can't see an issue with it. We did right. review these, I think, in March, didn't they we? Were, because it's a relatively new setup, yeah. I mean, this was only adopted relatively recently yes. when we approved the. And certainly, having sat on that committee, I'm not aware of the committee itself thinking that it was troubled by its own terms of reference because it was stopping it doing something or it was having it do something it really didn't want to be doing. So I would say just. Yes, I think we fixed that in yeah. March, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, do I have a proposer for that? Oh, having said that, I'm sorry. What I have noticed, however, and this may be where some confusion arises, on the copy that I have got in front yeah. of me, despite what it says elsewhere, for some reason this says the quorum of this committee is one half of the committee. Same for yes. personnel as well. And, yes. and it says exactly the same on personnel. Yeah. And then it says standing order 18, but actually standing order 18, the version that we are looking at, says it's a third. Yes. Yeah. So there's an obvious inconsistency. Mm. Yeah. It clearly is referring to standing orders. And as the standing orders mm. says a third rather than a half, we should just alter this. Yeah. So yeah. I'll just qualify yeah. what I said with subject to that amendment. Can we approve this? Yeah. A proposer? Mm -hmm. Councillor Chapel, seconder. Oh, yeah. Councillor right. Fuller, those in favour? Right, we'll press on faster the next one, which is the Personnel Committee, to review the terms of, and references for the Personnel Committee. Well, exactly the same exactly thing. The same thing. Yeah. Looked at yeah. Yeah. Recently, again, it says one half, standing order 18, mm -hmm. so that should be amended, but otherwise I would say just leave it. Unless the clerk, having looked at it, has found something... No, because I think when we, we recently looked at it... It has been um, looked at very recently. Yeah. We dealt with it, didn't we, mm -hmm. months back. The proposer? Proposer. Councillor Fuller, Councillor Chapel is seconding this time. Those in favour? Mm -hmm. Job done. Um, but with the same amendment. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. This one is um, changing. To review the terms and references for the communication stroke marketing working party. In there, we need, I think, to take that one away. I think that's what yeah. we were discussing earlier today. Take this one away yeah. completely to the next comms and marketing group meeting and work this through because these all refer to comms, the marketing terms of references which I wrote I think about three years ago when we first had a marketing group don't appear to have found their way in here and we revisited those um, about last August when we reformed the marketing committee when it was on its own and they still haven't found their way into the joint document so I think we need to do some 
uh, welding of those two lots of uh, terms of reference together and come up with something so. which will be agreed by that working party and reported back to full council. Is that a proposal? Proposal for that, please. Yes, and a seconder? Yeah. Councillor S. Oakes, those in favour? Smashing, thank you very much. We move on. Um, we now come on to elect or confirm the council representatives for the following bodies. And the first one um, is the Andal Museum Trust. That's the Mayor, the Deputy Mayor, and up to two. Um, so I, mean, I would mayor. like to continue I, so would I. with wearing a slightly different hat on this I, occasion. Yeah, I'm so I, would, I would definitely like to continue. I, I've been on this now for oh, a <laughs> would like to continue. I've been on this for about five years. So. Okay. And that's the full quote, is that? Yeah. Yep. Um, we then come on to the uh, larger council partnership. I'm not sure about this one, what <laughs> this one is all about. Mm. Um, and um, who is our representative now? You mean the church clock fund? I think it's the... No, 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 what is it? What does it do exactly? What, um, it's just I've never actually managed to get to a meeting, so I'm not in the best place to say. Basically, I think it's just a group of uh, individual <coughs> councils that get together and discuss um, issues that they have and sort of share ideas. Yes, it's like a share. It, 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 it's it's a sort of a, a think tank type thing. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. well, it's normally um, yeah. hosted, well, well, sort of organised by NCAP. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. Well, I'm already in there. I'll do their survey. So I'll carry on doing it. So, Councillor Fuller. Well, it's something that doesn't happen often. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. I mean, quite I, often I, I the clerk goes with, okay. a, with the councillor. Yeah, so I, I think they only I'll take the, 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 the last time. time. I'll, I'll take the first out. I mean, right, row two then of this little box. Uh, Andal Church Clock Fund then. That's the way I'm getting Can I just say, Councillor, sorry, Mayor, do we actually now need somebody to do that? If the uh, uh, property has been different sold off different, 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 different clock, and therefore we might not. No, 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 no. Church clock, clock fund is the ah, sorry, clock in the church. It's the clock as in the church. To the Can other we one. just have one talking at a time, please? Yeah, my apologies. I, 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 no, you, I misread it. Right. I was thinking of the church. The, 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 uh, yeah, I know. The one on the Barford Square. Yeah. Right, so this is the mayor and deputy are on the church clock fund. Okay. So you're also right. Fair trade. Um, I don't know if now I'm mayor I can continue to be on all of these things, but I was doing the fair trade as our representative. Whether anybody else wishes to take that over, or if you wish me to continue with it? Do you feel any interest? Yeah, I'm happy to. I didn't know if anybody else wanted to join me on that group. Um, if not, I'll continue alone. <laughs> um, youth Counselling Service chat. Councillor Chesser has been our representative on that, and I'm sure we'll She's a continue. She's the member as well. Yes, yeah, so um, she will, we can exactly. safely... just have one for that then? Yeah. We can safely put her name down okay. for that, yes. Um, the Association of Trade and Commerce. Um, it was Councillor Peel and myself, but Councillor Peel, you went to one meeting and were... Well, to be honest, Mayor, I think it's a load of crap. Well, I was going to say slightly disillusioned. <laughs> <laughs> it's just being recorded. I'm sorry, I'm honest. It, it, it is, I mean, all it is is a, is, is a, is a, is, is, is a chat shop for one organisation to chat to another and try and get business off each other. I can't see the point from doing that. If you're going to have an association like that, you should actually try and promote Handel. And it doesn't do that, it just promotes each other. I thought it was a total waste of my time. And the time of the councillors, but if somebody wants to go on it, then that's up to them. I have another councillor who is interested in taking that place if you... I don't want to do it. If you want to step down from it. I'll do it. Councillor Oaks nice S. I don't want to help him, actually. Jolly good. So we've got a, a strong contingent. You need a spy. Sorry? You need a spy on it. 
we need to be representative on that. Mm -hmm. And so find out what's yes. going on. That's we need, we need to, <laughs> yes, we need to resurrect the meetings, which we haven't had now for a very long time, um, about 18 months, um, the meetings between um, the council and the committee of the trade association. Um, that's that's the important follow-on from this. This is more the social one. The the yes. regular monthly meetings are more or less social, but leading on from those, where there's sort of interchange of ideas or should be, um, we also have meetings with them um, to try and uh, well promote the town. So um, we must get those going again. Should that be subsumed into the marketing? Job done. The next one is Parson Latham's Council representatives. Um, we've got Councillor Peel already on. Yes, I'd like to stay on. You'd like to stay on there? Yeah. Um, the way that works is that when you put forward somebody, essentially they stay on for I forgot how many years it is, um, unless they want to come off earlier. Um, so the other representatives are non councillors who previously been approved by this council, so there isn't really a... If the council appeal wants to continue, there isn't, as far as I'm aware, a vacancy in Mr Clark's... Do, do they normally contact us when the time is up? Yeah. To say you need to... Right, OK. I think it's Wednesday on it. As far as Yeah. And June Rowan's on it. Perhaps the Stern voice as well, if I'm not yet this OK. Right. So we've got Council Appeal yeah. mm -hmm. is on mm -hmm. there. Um, and the next one is Volunteer Action Representative. That again is Councillor Chesser's, yeah. um, one of her Very much so. activities. Anvil Twinning Association. No, this is a really interesting one. I'm not sure where we're going with this one. Is that like you volunteering? Oh, definitely not. I've done my bit. Do we have anybody interested in promoting the twinning with Andrasi and wherever it is in Germany that we... You are? Yeah. Really? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. good for you. I take my hat off to you. Well, I don't mind doing it. So, we've got our representative I'll need, I'll on that. I information about it because I've absolutely no idea. Jolly good. Um, Arundel Transition Town. Another complicated one. Transition handle that is, isn't it? That's well, it's something it's rather red now. Uh, hmm? It's the rep currently. I don't know. Um, I don't think we've got one. It used to be. Last year. I used to be for the council, David. Wood. 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 Yeah. 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 I don't think we've had one for about two years, and I'm trying to think who it was then. Exactly. Can you explain what it is? Um. <laughs> Where do you want to start? Who's the expert on transition and program? Well, David Wood is probably the contact. Yes. Um, I would say, and Alan Ray. I'm just, the I just <laughs> close the meeting a second and ask yes. uh, Mr. Fraser, are you come on, come able on, to enlighten us on, on the us. transition uh, and um, Do we have anybody keen to join transition and then as our representative? Sort of energy bit. issues and hmm? can, can, can we nominate somebody? <laughs> 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 Who's the Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well done, John. Well <laughs> we'll have to leave that one open and talk to the two who are absent and see if we can persuade somebody then. Um, the next thing is um, 171308 to elect or confirm the council flood warden. Um, Am I right, um, Councillor no, Fuller? That's you. I'm, I'm nominating you. Yeah. <laughs> he knows who he is. Right. Jolly good. Um, I'll I'll give you, you need a seconder. And we'll all work right for him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Floods of votes. <laughs> right. But are you here when we flood? Yeah. Well, no, 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 I've been here, I have witnessed a few floods. Floods of tears. Right, the next item then, 171309, 
to elect stroke confirm the council path warden. I, I have recruited, oh, unless right. anybody's really mad keen, I have recruited a path warden and an assistant path warden. Councillors Oaks N, assisted by Councillor Oaks S. Assisted by the dog yeah. Maximilian. Uh, by the dog we Maximilian. Maximilian. <laughs> well, basically, we're going to do a lot of dog walking <laughs> and report on the powers. Do we have to propose and do all that? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Come on, I'm on the seconders. I'm on the universal. Those well. in favour? <laughs> yes. Yep. Sorry, who seconded it? Yeah, we reported on that post the other day. Did you propose it? I proposed it. Who seconded it? I second. Then if you're wrong. in favour. I think at the moment you may want to speak to the Ramblers Association because they sort of do it for us as well. Right. Um, the rambling. Um, so All these are a whole load of people in there. Uh, is is that David? David Wills. David Wills. Yes. David Wills. Yeah. I know David Wills. No, no, no. We know David Wills. Um, That's okay. We might actually, oddly enough, um, might want to talk to people in the site main time. So. Because they do an awful lot of wandering around parts. Yeah. yeah, the person who might want to talk to is Paul the Councillor Percy Pierce. Yeah, yeah. He's done the business. He does. He's PH, yes. you see. That's right. Right. Let's... Sorry, I'll just quickly, I'll give the Ramblers have got a copy of the definitive map and they've gone and checked all of the footpaths, um, because yeah. we've got this consultation that we've got and they've gone and checked all of the footpaths because we've got this consultation. I've also got a copy of it with the footpaths on if you want to come in and have a look. Well, if you want to send that. So, I, I can't, it's a massive map. Oh. You can't have it, but I saw any copies. Oh, I, I see, it's well, it's a physical map. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not map, electronic. Yeah. Then. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so yeah, come and have a look. Moving on then, 17, 13, 10, to elect or confirm the verification councillor. Financial regulation 2.2. This is the councillor who is not a signatory to the bank account, who will um, come in at... It probably requires monthly intervals rather than quarterly, which I think was in yeah. the original standing orders, um, to check the um, check payments, check the receipts associated with check payments and direct debits and what have you, check everything through and ensure that payments are correct um, before they go to council for approval. It's part of our internal control mechanism. Mm -hmm. and what normally happens is you, you sort of pick every fifth or every fourth entry on a bank statement and ask to see the list of payments. Councillor Glenn has volunteered his services there before the meeting, so those well, in favour of Councillor Glenn? I did make the, I can think make of the name up. Oh, right. The <laughs> verification <laughs> councillor is something I made up. So right. You don't have to call okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think he's happy with that title. <laughs> We're all very happy with that. <laughs> right. We now move on um, to 1714 financial matters. And um, I'm going to ask, just so you get a change of voice really, yeah, I'm going to ask Councillor Chapel if he'll, um, if he'll do some of this. Um, the first item, David, is to review and amend the signatories on the Council Bank account to ensure that the bank mandate is updated <coughs> to reflect the signatories of the Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Clerk and Serving Councillors. Um, um, yes. Uh, First time I knew I was doing this item was when he walked through the door at about quarter past seven this evening. So if I'm less it's prepared than I might have been, uh, forgive me. Um, I'm also marginally confused because a moment ago I thought I heard the Mayor say that the verification councillor shouldn't be a check signatory. And this item appears to suggest that all councillors should be check signatories, which would seem to somewhat complicate matters. Mm. Yeah. Um, However, assuming we can get round that one, yes. clearly we do need to update the bank mandate. It is somewhat um, lagging behind events, should we say, and it's not always easy to get the right number of people no, to sign it. it. Um, all people, all councillors that have resigned and left, and um, and officers are offered. Um, so we've got uh, Councillor Chapel, um, Councillor Chesser. Councillor N. Oakes, Councillor Sparks, myself, and Hanukkah. I seem to remember going in the bank and signing mandate. Sorry? I seem to remember giving my signature in the bank at some point. 
They, they have no record of your... They have records. They have, they have records. Oh, they, yeah, oh, I will say, it's yeah. taken, it took a long time oh, to get to this. And, oh, and perhaps the sparks and, right, and us have to go in again. We did. We had to go yeah. through the whole process. Yeah. Um, so we've yeah. got six councillors who are not currently right. signatories. And the suggestion is that all of them should be capable of becoming signatories. Mm -hmm. Which seems sensible. The only point I would make is that if anybody were to be thinking of leaving the council, please don't become a signatory and then probably yeah. leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I, you don't necessarily need all of you. It I doesn't mean, have to but be. You I are mean, only it's just ten. the way this is written. Yeah, yeah you um, are only ten. Um, so, so there's a certain degree of logic in the deputy mayor being a signatory, yeah. mm -hmm. and Charles currently yeah. isn't. So I would I just ask whatever else you do me out of that. I mean, you, and you only need, well, you need three, don't you, effectively, to sign the cheque. Mm. Well, that would give us five, I mean, yeah. it would be any three. I'd quite have it five. I'd have it to stay as a cheque. Just, the, just, it wouldn't the verification councillor be... Uh, well, under financial regulation 2.2, no. apparently he, he should not be a signatory, he shouldn't be able to sign the cheque. He should be in totally yes, impartial. Totally He's impartial. impartial. He just checks that mm. well, those who are signing are signing things that are valid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, point taken. Point taken. Sorry, so he... What's the process of becoming one? How easy? Oh. So, well, you've got a form out, oh. take it to the bank. Um, we get a form signed by the mayor. You take your own form in with your own identification. The bank that. then lose it, and then we start again. <laughs> can't just say that, that, is, that, that is, was horribly accurate. Because that actually, they managed to lose and it, it, it. It's happened twice. every council yeah. I've ever been. It, it happened twice mm. uh, for me. Yeah, they do it. Because right. I did everything as I should have done, and all of a sudden, but I had to do it all over again. That is yeah. the process. Um, uh, you know, it's a case of I've got the forms. I've brought two lots of forms in. Oh. Um, Does it mean that I've got to, have well. I got to reapply? No, mm. it's no. just if anybody's new. No, you were there. Bank. You've been signing checks, and there's been no problem with you signing. I've been signing checks for five years. Yeah. yeah. Well, you so, you on it, you on. I did used to be one. You yeah. did. Yeah. When yeah. you left as a councillor, you would come off. Yeah. Um, but I think probably Councillor Best should be. Yes, one. he should. Yes. I think, um, yes. Yes. We have a new child, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So probably well, that would be a child. I don't mind being one, but that child but, 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 To the extent that it's needed, I'll formally propose that our newly elected Deputy Mayor, Councillor Best, is added as a signature. Yes. That's fine, Mayor. Those in favour? I know I will because look, my wife did, um, did anybody second that? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost everybody, I think. Yeah, pick well, anybody you know. like. <laughs> yeah. If you need any more, you can ask. Yeah. Can I just say, I think that can we... my, my lady wife ought to come on as well, simply because, well, she works at the bank for a start, yes, so she knows it. what the procedures are. Yes. All that paperwork, I tell you, will go off to the business banking centre, that's why it's getting lost. Yeah, right. Let's, uh, let, let's move on for tonight. The next item then add. is to agree to set up a direct edit franking machine. Yes. It just seems to be perfectly straightforward. Pitney Bowes. Pitney Bowes, straightforward. So can You're, I simply propose I'll it? I'll propose it. Yeah. I'll second it. I'll just second it. Those in favour? Wallop. That's everybody. Wallop. Jolly good. Job done. Right. Um, next lots of a stack of figures. Now bearing in mind the comment I made earlier to wit, I wasn't expecting to do this. Um, I am simply going to say this, in terms of the bank reconciliation, you simply got the copy, it's really there for information, it's all right. The balance sheet is the end of year balance sheet, so it's perhaps a little bit more interesting than it kind of normally is, but I'm not going to say anything particularly about it, other than to say that we appear to be nudging a point at which our total assets, less current liabilities, are getting quite close to three million, which is quite impressive for a council of this size. Mm. Um, perhaps more significantly, it is the profit and loss figures which we've got here. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's subsequent to these, because on the face of it, the period figures appear to be exactly the same as the year-to-date figures, which can't possibly be right, because we didn't receive all of our income and have all of our expenditure in the month of April and have no income and no expenditure for the other 11 months. So somehow the period 
figures and the year-to-date figures appear to have effectively been duplicated. Mm -hmm. These are the 12 it's months. First of April yeah. of 2017, it's mm -hmm. the same period. Um, the period means one year. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe when we see them, there's a period of the, the month that it relates to. But anyway, yeah. whichever it is, um, the income figures, well, you can see that, for example, the hub between, or perhaps between the hub and the room hires has come in at £116,500, so that's a not insignificant sum. Um, we look at other figures, perhaps one of the key figures to look at is markets, the regular market at 13600 farmers market at 63 others at 38 so the markets themselves are contributing in excess of 23,000 years. Again, it's a pretty significant figure. Um, the other main news is in relation to the courthouse, where um, the auction income from out of a thousand from hiring out the council chamber, should I say perhaps for the council chamber, the meeting rooms just over seven and a half, the business and office units at 11 and 8. Um, 1400 in from the museum. So again, when you look at what that actually represents at um, something in excess of 21,000, perhaps getting up towards 22,000 pounds from the courthouse, again, it's a not insignificant sum. Um, so you've got a total income, including the precept of 578,000 pounds, 578 and a half, Conscious of what's coming, I'm not going to dwell on the uh, expenditure side, it is all set out. Perhaps the highlight figure is that on the face of it, the expenditure is such that we're left with a um, net surplus, I'd rather call it surplus, sorry, with the profit as it says in the document, but a net surplus of just under £20,000 at the end of the year. Um, which, considering it was a difficult year to start with, perhaps might be a bit of an understatement, um, is a testament to the hard work of councillors and particularly to council staff that we've been capable of achieving that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to be recognised. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, budget report, when it's there, um, period trial balances again. Which brings us, I suspect, um, to um, the last item, which is the payments. Um, in what I might call the uh, new form in which these things are done, the actual proposition doesn't now mention a specific figure. No, but it um, hasn't been amended since. <laughs> because I think for about the last three months in succession, <laughs> the figure published in the agenda has never, never actually been the figure that we've then adopted. <laughs> I like this, like this niftiness. So it now <laughs> simply says that the schedule of payments for April 2017 is presented at this item and paid, and that all related documentation and checks are signed. Uh, and you will see essentially its full total payments. That's including all staff salaries, it's including all checks, and it's including all the various direct debits which are set out. And the total figure on here is £54,407.51. Right. Uh, and I suppose a um, kind of highlight figure uh, to draw your attention to in terms of the checks is a payment to the trustees of the QBH of £8,000, effective balancing figure. Um, and uh, you'll see Berries have uh, had their fee for letting out the courthouse office. Um, we've got um, a clean bill of 2,300, and we've got various income costs of very nearly uh, the same figure. Uh, but if people are happy, I would like to propose, as I indicated earlier, that the schedule of payments for April 2017 as presented at this item are paid off. And that all related documentation and checks are signed. Councillor Fuller, all those in favour? Appears to be a full house. Fine, thank you very much. Can I can I just say there that
50,000-ish is a fairly typical monthly figure for us, so it's in keeping with what it is most months, leading to around, for 12 months, obviously around 600,000, which is what we've, um, what our expenditure has been for the last couple of years. It's also worth saying that one of the things finance and general purposes will look at is that in broad terms we try to keep available um, a figure equivalent to three months expenditure, which means that we need a reserve cost of roughly £150,000, which we'll doubtless be looking at when we have our first FNGP meeting of the year. Now I'll introduce the next item, Mr. I'll introduce the next item and uh, have a feeling you'll be on your feet again because uh, item 1715, planning matters, 171501, to receive the minutes from the planning committee meeting held on the 2nd of May 2017. Uh, right, well, the minutes are in there. It should be a question for you to see them and note them. It was the meeting at which we discussed the planning application for Prime Costa Stock Road that I referred to earlier. It's really the next item on the agenda that is potentially going to be the biggest item, which makes it rather alarming that we're about to start at very nearly nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And Councillor Peel. Yeah, um, I actually uh, did actually write to Emma about this. Uh, you know, I didn't actually get this completely planned until this morning. And I, I quite frankly don't think we should try and go through it tonight. I just don't think it was actually was sent out a month ago, at the end of March, to every councillor. Well, in that case, I don't know what happened, but I, I, couldn't, I didn't read it, I didn't get it. Prior to the meeting that we had on the 2nd of May. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's really the next item. 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 Yeah, it's really the we finished, there is a consensus along the lines that we may need to look at this, perhaps for my own a special meeting. Well, this is what I suggest. The, the, the history of the thing essentially is this. To keep it short-ish, last year when we were operating with five councillors to a quorum of five councillors, one of the difficulties that we had was with the whole area of the neighbourhood plan and essentially what happened was that members of what had been the former sort of neighbourhood planning group who were non-councillors essentially were asked to work on that neighbourhood plan away from council and just basically get on with it and that's what happened um, there was a group of people, at least uh, one of whom, at least one of whom, uh, was a former councillor, um, and they did indeed work on that plan. And at um, about the beginning of April this year, they presented to council a draft plan, and um, that draft plan. was that document there um, and was produced in essence by the consultant that the council had engaged to work with the group and with the council uh, obviously on the basis of the input provided by the group and all the information and evidence base that the group established so that is a draft regulation 14 consultation draft. They provided it to the council. The council's uh, arrangements were such that it fell to the planning committee to deal with it. Um, and um, what happened was that we did have a planning meeting to which all councillors were in fact invited when this first came and uh, District Councillor Stern, who basically led the neighbourhood plan group, and Mark Benz, local architect, who was a member of that group, came and essentially talked us through the document and were available to take questions. 
The feeling then was that we just hadn't had enough time to digest a document which uh, runs to some 50 pages. Um, and so what was agreed was that we'd take a couple of weeks, councillors could then feed back to me any comments, queries, questions, etc. that they had. During that period, I went through the document, in a sense, doing two things. One was a kind of proofreading exercise, and the other was, might there be certain questions that could be usefully asked of Councillor Stirling and his group? Uh, and that resulted in me sending to Councillor Stirling, I'm not sure whether other councillors or all councillors have seen it, but four pages of if you like, proofreading, corrections, questions, etc, etc. Councillor Stern very kindly looked at that quite quickly and came back to me and said that in terms of things like saying you've got four instead of five and various other things, uh, yeah, happy with all of it, and there were one or two other um, relatively cosmetic changes, if you like, we'd be perfectly happy with. In relation to what might be called some of the question aspects of it, what he said was, well, it may be better to await the NPR's um, assessment outcome before we decide what else to do. Mm -hmm. NPR's um, is a kind of group of independent outside assessors who, amongst other things, basically look at draft neighbourhood plans and give advice about the way in which they're put together, whether there are obvious problems with it. For example, if it doesn't comply with the National Planning Policy Framework, you can have a problem. If it doesn't in this area comply with the recently adopted joint course strategy, you're going to have a problem, etc. Uh, so we went to NPIRS, and to some extent our first question was, what's it going, how long is it going to take and what's it going to cost? That's when things started to go marginally pear-shaped because they then came back and said it's 10 days at uh, X pounds a day. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't take very much to work out that 10 days at 375 pounds a day is 3,750. And whilst we built in a budget for the neighbourhood plan, what we haven't done is budgeted for 3,750 expenditure in that way. Um, was then left to the clerk to try and talk to them. And unfortunately, whilst uh, I have tried to speak with the clerk or communicate with the clerk, I don't know what the answer is. Um, so I'm now looking at the clerk to find out where I, we got to with that. I went back to um, speak to Kimberley at NPS, and she said she would look to see if she could get another consultant. Uh, because basically what they do is they set you up with a consultant. I then ring the consultant, talk it through, tell him what size, how big the plan is, what we need to look at, and then they come back with the price. Um, so she's looking into that, and I, then she went on holiday. Um, she's back, and this week she's picked it up again. She's hopefully, she's struggled to get somebody else, um, but she has, she thinks she's got somebody, so I'm just gonna get an idea um, of, another, of another quote, basically. Um, I've also tried to get quotes from other councils, and I, we asked Sean if she would be able to let us know what they paid. And although lots of people said, oh, it's only about £500, nobody has actually come back. I said, yes, we only paid £500. In fact, nobody's come back with anything. So it's either they can't find how much they paid, or it's, I don't know, a lot more, whatever. But, or maybe they've never done the work. Or, but yeah, exactly. So, um, so at the moment I'm hoping um, I should keep chasing this week just to get somebody else just to see if the quote's different. But at, I mean, when we had that other meeting with East North Ants, they stressed that it still would be a good idea, even if it was going to cost that amount of money. And we have currently we, we've got a grant that I've received from um, it's called Groundworks for six thousand seven hundred. But that was in a hope to pay if you were going to use a consultant again, some consultancy fees to finish off the plan. Mm -hmm. But obviously there is that money and we've got until the end of September to spend that, otherwise it has to go back. Um, so we could use that, but obviously that's a decision that... Mm -hmm. Right, now to carry on the story, 
when this matter came before the planning committee on the 2nd of May, the planning committee itself literally went through the document policy by policy by policy. And the end result of that was that there were some sort of further issues, concerns and what have you, which then turned out to be that document. So the good news is it's gone down from four pages, if you like, to, to, to one page, but that's in addition to the four I have to say in two places for. And to some extent that's where matters rest, other than this, that subject to these various comments that the committee were making, in principle, the planning committee said Town Council should take the neighbourhood plan draft forward now, subject to any comments from any years. And so we come today with the, uh, the agenda item being to approve it. Now, it's a question of approving it, if you like, subject to the various issues, stroke comments that have already been raised. There is also the side issue of but we haven't got the NPS scenario which we'd rather hope we would have had by now. Against that we also have to measure another two complications. One is that our friends and neighbours in Blackthorn, and we did declare the interest earlier, are themselves doing a neighbourhood plan, which of course frankly is a bit simpler in a village of 120 dwellings uh, than it is in the town. So they've raced ahead with theirs and basically they got themselves to essentially the same point. And as you will see, there is an item on the agenda a little bit later saying, oh look, look what, there's a meeting in Blackpool on Thursday night in relation to their plan in a public exhibition on Saturday. Blackpool were very keen to understand what Andal's plans were because they were getting interest in developments on the border between Blackpool and Andal. When I say on the border, what I mean is all of these developments would have been in Blackpool Parish, but essentially um, away from the current built environment of Blackpool and basically nestling up against this town. And they wanted to know what Andal's plan was so that they could try to ensure that they dovetailed. We have had meetings with Blackthorn and with the MC. At the most recent one, which was after the May planning meeting, but before this meeting, we had a slightly difficult meeting, I think Clark might agree that difficult might be the appropriate word, in as much as Blackthorn were pushing and pushing for us to provide them with a copy of the thing. And I was pointing out that it didn't seem to me to be appropriate to provide them with a copy of a document that had yet to be approved by this council. Um, they were very anxious to understand certain things and the net result was that during the course of the meeting, Councillor Stern, Councillor Chesser and I absented ourselves in the room and left the others to it whilst we went up into the clerk's room with the clerk. We had a conversation, we agreed upon a way of taking these forward. Uh, I made certain observations in the meeting and said, we'll send you something shortly. Mm -hmm. Which in essence is what then happened. I then prepared a draft to try and give platform a bit more information without at that stage feeling able to provide a copy of this because it's been here tonight. Um, I then went to Councillor Chesser and to Councillor Stern, made sure that they were happy that I send it. I then sent it when they approved it to uh, Alan Barnish, who is essentially um, the sort of secretary to the Neighbourhood Plan Group in Blackpool, which is fine as far as it's gone, but they would still hope to be getting a copy of that. And I can tell you their hope is that we were going to approve it tonight because what I'd said is if it's approved tonight, we'll send you a copy tomorrow. Mm. Um, which would mean that they would physically have got a copy of it prior to their meeting on Thursday and the various public exhibitions which they're doing on Saturday. Mm. However, 
This is one of the most important decisions this council is going to make. We don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to rush it. And it is now ten past nine, because I've been speaking for the last ten minutes. There's at least one councillor here who would clearly welcome the idea of this being the subject of a special meeting where the only item on the agenda is to look at the neighbourhood plan and where potentially we could go through this in the same way as we went through it in planning, which is to look at each and every policy and make sure that councillors are happy with it. Now these policies include very, very specific policies with regard to residential development. I think I'd be fair in saying that this is probably the most detailed neighbourhood plan that I am aware of in the country. Mm. Do not believe there is another one which has sought to do it in the way that this plan has done. It's one of the reasons it's been so long in making. It's born of the fact that when we did a call for sites, we knew roughly how many houses we anticipated we'd need to provide. This was on the basis of the original drafts of the Joint Force Strategy now adopted, so we now know what the official number is, if you like. We knew roughly what we would be looking at. And, and I think it's fair to say that in broad terms we thought, well, we'll be looking at somewhere between about 250 and 300. That's for the plan period to 2031. We've got developers wanting to develop 1,200. That means that for every space that we've got, we've got people wanting to build four houses, which meant something had to give. If we'd gone and said to the developers, oh great, you, know, you all want to develop, wonderful, we'll have 1,200 houses. We'd never have got the matter through a referendum because the public simply wouldn't vote for it. They'd say it was ridiculous. Uh, and frankly, I'd have to say I'd be one of those ones who'd be voting against it uh, because it would be over development. So, what happened was that a very, very carefully detailed piece of work was done. Every site had been properly assessed using criteria that had been put to us by a planning consultant, Marine Planning, who were experienced in this area. So, every site was adjudged against the criteria. We then decided how those sites could best be developed, and that included looking at numbers on the sites. It also included saying, all right, it's all very well saying we'll allocate this land for building. What's in it for animal? And there were certain overarching things that we wanted. Amongst the things that we wanted was a kind of joined up cycle stroke footpathway so that it was much easier to get around the town. It was there not only for functionality in terms of getting from A to B, but as a leisure activity for residents and the visitors to the town. So network of cycleways, etc. was part of the package. But there were other things we were looking for. It included an extension to the cemetery because we have to pass a Bible that says no one can die in this town, which will be incredibly popular because we haven't actually got anywhere to put them very soon because we're running out of cemetery space no, extraordinarily no. rapidly. We wanted a town council controlled festival site so that for things like the Anglo International Festival we could ensure that there was a suitable site to ensure that the continuity of the thing that the relevant facilities were there. Mm -hmm. As councillors may recall we had the school providing a site for a number of years, various reasons they were no longer willing to do that. It then moved to a location down by the wharf, which isn't totally ideal, so we looked at that. We looked at the fact that there is no town council allotment provision. There are a few private allotments by a private arrangement with the owners of Millersfield and Benefield Road, so we were looking at that. Cut a long story short, these negotiations led to developers saying, OK, we'll give you X or Y or Z, um, and agreeing with us numbers for sites. Mm. And they formed the basis of these very detailed policies. The primary driver for this was the questionnaire that is now a good couple of years old, mm. in which we asked a number of questions. Now, there's always a risk. 
that the answers you get back are dependent upon the way you frame the questions in the first place. It's possible that if we had had more time to ask more questions in a more detailed document, we'd have had a somewhat different response. Who knows? But what did seem to come out of it was that people didn't necessarily want everything on a single site, or maybe even two big sites. They'd rather have a number of small sites. They'd rather have them scattered around the town than concentrated in one area. And they really were hoping that development wouldn't be taking place more than about a mile from a town centre. So everything was judged against that. And that's what this draft plan seeks to deliver. Um, and does. Um, possibly controversially, in terms of the numbers that the JCS says is the minimum requirement, and I do stress the word minimum, this is proposing somewhat more housing. One of the reasons it proposes more housing is because by accepting the package around the various developments, we get a number of spin-off benefits. And I should perhaps have mentioned one of the other spin-off benefits is essentially a potentially a new site for the cricket club to give it security in, in case the uh, current provision by Anvil School isn't continued. And so there's a site off um, Hearn Road, which would have some residential development and then a cricket pitch, which would in essence be the opposite side to the Prince William playing fields, so it all fits in quite nicely. So there are detailed policies in there, and if this council approves them, what we would then be needing to do is to go to the town and show them this, and get hopefully some positive feedback, leading to us working our way through the various statutory stages. And in broad terms, that means we have to put it to ENC, who have to kind of do an initial vetting of it, mm. and then in due course it goes off to an inspector, and if the inspector gives it the thumbs up, we can then take it to referendum. And if we have problems with the NC or the inspector, we may have to make modifications along the way. Now, clearly if we are going to go to the town and say, this is what we are recommending, we really need to be singing probably from one song sheet as a council. Maybe that there would be a council or councillors who aren't fully kind of on board with certain things. But there might have to be a degree of kind of cabinet responsibility about this once decisions are taken. But it comes back to these are fairly key decisions to take. And time is moving on. I'm torn because I would very much like to have got a decision tonight. I know that the parishioner members of the steering group, one of whom is sitting in our audience tonight, would have liked us to have reached a decision tonight because they want to see progress. And Councillor Stern is away on his holidays and no doubt be disappointed if in fact we haven't got a decision tonight. I think when well, he is actually back on his holiday because he's been in, but he's at a meeting ah. at Tresham. Right, well, whatever. Regarding the door, Wherever he is, I suspect he would be disappointed if we don't reach a decision. But it is now. 20 past 9, and I've been speaking for 20 minutes. And I'll make an apology for that because, because there's a lot you have to understand. Mm -hmm. So we need to make a decision. If people have read it and are on board with it, subject to some of the comments that have already been made, fine, maybe we can do it. If people are not on board with it, and only some of the people around this table are on planning and have already looked at it and have already broadly speaking approved it, then I think I would back what Councillor Peel says and we put it off and we have a special meeting at the earliest possible opportunity and we have to tell Blackpool that that's what's happened. Um, I am open to suggestions. Well, can I, before we say any more, I've got something I need to say and need to say in closed session. I have asked for this for a very long time at a lot of meetings of this. There's a piece of information which I've had for a while um, that I think is relevant to this and uh, I also think we need to fill in with that piece of information a bit of <coughs> background history of what's happened um, and the next thing I would say is if we can go into a closed session so that I can tell you this, this piece of information before you 
In that case, may I move that in view of the special and or confidential nature of the business about to be transacted, it is advisable in the public interest that the public be temporarily excluded and they are instructed to withdraw, understanding Order 3C, which we were going to do later when we got to planning personnel matters anyway, but I'm quite prepared to move it now in view of what the Mayor has just said, if somebody will second that, so that the Mayor can tell us whatever it is he's got to tell us. Got a proposal, we've got a second in All those in yeah. favour of the proposition to exclude would appear to be a full house. Before I leave, I will say, um, inappropriately probably, that if you are going to vote on the approval or not of the, um, the um, proposed document, that shouldn't be in closed session. Significantly, so please call me back for mm. those. Mm. Um, I think I can assure former Councillor Fraser that we will be discussing whatever it is we are discussing. We will then reopen the meeting, albeit that we may then come to the ne next item, be promptly closing it again for a different reason. That's fine, I'm going to leave after You will be able to come back and hear whatever and the decision is. I think the Council needs to bear in mind, bear in mind its previous position in re re relation to Blackthorn and proximity of development to the boundaries of Amory, which is clearly significant to Blackpool. It's something that we can discuss further. But that can be discussed in open. Which could be discussed in open. Can you In open session, we are recording. Um, the clerk will read the... Um, oh, you know, I'm, I'm very conscious of the time <laughs> um, and of the fact that we've had a discussion about certain matters. It is clear to me that we do not have the time now to go through this plan in the way that the planning committee did it. And I think that in all fairness to councillors and to the town, I wouldn't want you to thought now that we were simply putting the thing through on the nod. So, so I would like to put a proposal, the wording of which I think the clerk will now be able um, to read. We propose that the council um, does not approve the neighbourhood plan at this meeting, but arrange an extraordinary meeting to discuss the plan per further prior to approval. So that's my proposal. May I ask for all those in favour? would appear to be unanimous. Um, obviously one of the things we're now going to have to do, A is find a date, mm -hmm. um, and B is I'm going to have to say something to Blackpool. Mm -hmm. um, all I can tell them is that unfortunately this came on a very heavy agenda mm -hmm. and it couldn't be done properly in the time and we're setting up a special meeting and therefore everything we've said applies but they're going to hear from us a bit later. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate but you know, so the truth is always best. We can't do it, we can't say anything else. Um, and so that's what they'll be told. And, you know, when we can tell them some more, we'll tell them some more. Um, and we will have a special meeting and it will be held in public. And I will go through this on a not quite line by line basis, but certainly policy oh, by oh, policy. Oh, oh, yeah, basis. Yeah, it's a it's, it's 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 indicate it's what oh, the planning committee said, which, oh. is, which is, if you like, those comments and then we will decide where we are. But it is also in um, Blackthorn's interest so that it's done this way. I think it probably is, although I'm not so sure that people see it that way because they are so desperate to know the answers because they're so keen to get on. The only thing I would say in relation to that, and it appears on our agenda a bit later, is to receive letters from Blackpool Neighbourhood Planning Group regarding dates of public exhibitions on the 27th of May, which is Saturday, and the 10th of June. And perhaps what I should say is that there are two dates for that to avoid complications for Gladthorne mm. about things being restricted to a bank holiday Saturday because they came under a certain amount of pressure when it was suggested that this public exhibition would only be on the bank holiday Saturday so it's now going to be on two just mm. and the public in Gladthorne will get the opportunity to react to what is in their draft. 
it's a public meeting, so anybody who is interested from Andor can certainly go along and see what it is. They probably shouldn't be voting, as it were, and saying what should or shouldn't happen. But you can certainly look at it and form some ideas, perhaps, from that. Um, and there is a big issue because you will be made aware at that meeting of the extent of interest to develop land in Glatthorn that is proximate to Andor. Um, and you will see what the Blackthorn Parish Council's reaction to that is. But that's all I'm going to say at this stage mm -hmm. because it's not public yet. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think probably concludes planning matters which I yeah. think has now taken something in excess of an hour for which I apologise to everybody. Right, um, we now move on. Um, Please note that in view of the special and or confidential nature of the business about to be transacted, it is advisable in the public interest that the public be temporarily excluded and they are instructed to withdraw. Standing order 3C. I'll second. Those in favour? Right, we're now into personnel matter. The meeting is reopened. I think technically we should, but I think yeah. the accounts of He's gone, I think. Um, so we can now. Um, oh, we well, need to open the door just to make sure. <laughs> now we're worried about it. Because yeah. he didn't wait to bye bye. But... No, he's gone. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So. We have the proposal. Um, can we have a proposal to the proposition that we approve the dignity at work, yes. stroke bullying and harassment? Yes, propose. Proposed by yes. Councillor Fuller, seconded by Councillor Oakes S. Right. Those in favour? Very good thing to have. Job done. Yeah, absolutely. It's vital. Um, we now move on to correspondence for action to consider um, invitation from Arundel Rotary Club to provide training in emergency life support procedures by Heartstar Arundel. Again, you've got it in your pack. Yes, Councillor Peel, put this forward. Well, yeah, I mean, I was, I was approached by uh, Jane Grant from the Millennium Tower. And I think it's a very good idea because mm -hmm. everybody needs to know how to sort of uh, help people in that situation. So mm -hmm. I just think we should have the training uh, in house and we can go for it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been initiated by the gentleman who actually got the, uh, got the thing going for us to put. Uh, the old uh, yeah. defibs in. It was hard start that uh, worked with us and some of the councillors, Paul Pierce Hughes and myself yeah, in particular, PPS. worked on the um, worked on getting these defibrillators put in a, at locations around the town, and um, uh, they they carry out hard start carry out the training. Um, uh, we mentioned last year in the Oracle. Um, or in, sorry, not last year, in the, the oracle that Councillor Dainter did, I mentioned as part of his states that these things were now in and that training was available, contact the council, and Heartstart got in touch with me and said we should have had a write-up. Um, I don't think they've sent us anything for the current oracle, have they? No, Having no. said that, they, they haven't come back to us. We did offer them space in the oracle <coughs> to tell us all about the training, but... Um, then as, uh, just a, a point, I have actually been approached by two members of the public saying these are all very well, especially the one down at um, the Jones Strong. Yeah. Uh, they're all very well, but it's, no one seems to know how, the, how it works and everything else. So the public are actually quite keen that they're yeah. there. Yeah. And there is some, and I think it should, the Oracle or some other means should be, there should be some advertising yes. of it yeah. we must get that done because yeah. once again if we don't mm. we open ourselves up to oh it's just been kept in house no one really yeah. knew about yes. it so it absolutely. must be massively absolutely. Absolutely. to that end I've got one other piece to tell you there we have got somewhere um, amongst the stuff that came with the defibrillators we had a training video and uh, I suggested that we have it on show on a on a TV or a recorder or whatever it needs to be played on 
in, say, the Glapthorn Room made available at certain times for people to come along and see it and learn about uh, the use of defibrillators. It could also be shown, but I don't think there's any... Sorry? Can't the whole... It can go on the website. Well, well we've done that, before. That, was, well, that was actually suggested, that it goes on the website yeah. as well. Yeah. But we could actually... People could actually come here and sit and watch it. It could even be shown on a screen in the hub, if, if necessary. So that anybody coming in the building can see what it's all about. There's nothing there that's, you know, frightening or anything that's going to frighten children if it's in the hub. Um, I think we must dig out that video. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of talk it's at the time. Get, needs, from my opinion, I think it needs to go on the internet. Yeah. It also needs to, if you are going to show it in the hub or somewhere else, there needs to be someone there to answer the mm. questions that will inevitably arise from having, yeah. been, having been seen. Yeah. Yeah. And can you advertise on the electronic measures board? Can I? Yes. Can you also yeah. get yeah. yeah. on the... Uh, why, 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 don't, why don't we see if a surgery They've actually put training sessions on. Yeah. We've had a series no, of No, I'm wondering whether we supplied them and they can put it on really everything, you know. Mm. That's the sort of thing. Because mm. people are sitting there for hours, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely yeah, that's, they, they probably, you know, yeah. be more interested in watching that than well, I mean, watching if you're, if, <laughs> if, if, if you're in a surgery, <laughs> yeah. you might be very interested. It's logical, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Right. Are we all in yeah. favour of that? Yes. 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 Very much so. Propose a seconder. Proposal. Very. Whoever you like. Yes. We do. Fuller yes. seconder. Yeah. Whoever you like. Yeah. 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 Um, those in favour. Oh, no, it seems to sense. Yes. yes. Jolly right. good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, to receive a letter from Glapthorne Neighbourhood Planning Group regarding the dates of the public exhibitions, where well, we've received that. We don't need to do anything yeah. about yeah. it. We've received that. It's in your pack. Um, to receive uh, an email from Inspector Darrell Lyon regarding accessibility dates in Oundle. Yeah, these are just dates where he's going to be available in between 9 and 12, and uh, the date for Oundle, um, he's going to be all over Eastern House. The date for Oundle is the 14th of July. For him to do what? What's he going to do? He's, he's there, he will be there just to go and speak about him. Okay, in much the same way he did at the... Uh, Town meeting. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. But I've also since had a letter from him for uh, parish and town councils, uh, which talks about their reasons for why we won't have a regular police officer attending yeah, our meeting. Um, <laughs> and oh, well, it, it would be if we need to speak to somebody, then we can get them to come like back. So, so but they, um, I, I will circulate that to you. Right. That being the end of the business, unless anybody has anything else. Uh, okay, we'll go around the room. Councillor Peel? No. No, Councillor Fuller. Uh, brief, this is a brief thing. Uh, I met the uh, two ladies for the emergency planning team from North Hampshire today the day uh, to do with this Pathfinder project, which is the flooding thing that I'm part of. Yes. Um, one of the things that you do in part of Pathfinder is that you have an annual meeting where you meet the fire and rescue, all, the, all the emergency services. And I suggested that it'd be a good idea to do that in the town meetings, so that would be something that the people organising that will have to do. We have the, we have the police, but you might have anybody else in there, so you can have a discussion. Uh, they're going to do a survey at some point, it's going to be a walk around the whole of the boundaries. They've asked me where all the floods are, so some of the floods are not there, 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 there. And also with, the, with some of the buildings going, or potentially areas that we need to be interested in, so I'm like, uh, 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 roughly. Um, I said, they were very happy, we're all of it, it's good stuff. Very good. Thank you very much. No. Nothing. Councillor Chapel. We need a date for the special. Um, <laughs> we need a date for that. <laughs> I'm going to um, this on Friday. Um, the difficulty we've got is obviously we don't now have any spare tubes. So yeah. it has to be a different item. Mm. For, for reasons that might be slightly yeah. obvious and so on, I think it might be vaguely helpful if it's an item which I'm available to be there. Most um, definitely. Absolutely. And it probably wants to be sooner rather than later, so I'm looking at my diary and wondering about Monday the 5th of June, because it's probably about as close as we can get in. Monday the 5th, how does that I can't get my attention to vote, can I? <laughs> Tuesday? Well, the Tuesday's a planning meeting. Why don't, we make it, why don't you make it the planning can't. meeting to do that? It's, yeah, because the planning meeting is open to everybody, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So why don't we have that well, special... What we could do is we could have the... the, the, the
planning meeting early Quick. and follow it just by a yes. council meeting. Yes. And we, the only thing we look at in planning is the planning applications and we they're defer those until after yeah, they're, the they're other not, matters. They're not that many either. We haven't got, got any big ones. No, we haven't got any big ones. We'll so put it in on that thing. night then. I think that's a yeah. brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 Job sure. done. No, move Six to June then. Six to June. Six Six to June. So I seven to, and a half, half an hour then you'd carry on. With my lady wife because it's our wedding anniversary. Oh! oh. So I'm hoping that you guys are going to agree. It's already probably going to have to be here for planning, but clearly that's going to be Don't worry, tell them you've got a nice bottle of champagne. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on the way, but I might have to do better than that. Councillor Oaks N, anything? Any other business for Councillor Oaks S? Councillor Glenn, anything else? With that then I'll close the meeting. Thank you very much.